When rain falls, storms come. There's something fascinating going on. As raindrops touch the ground, a pleasant scent emerges. After the rain has passed, a faint scent stays in the air. It's the fresh smell that leaves a strong memory in our minds. Some people call it the smell of rain. The others use the scientific name petrichor, the essence of the soil. But why does this earthy scent keep grabbing our attention? Where does it come from, and why are humans so good at detecting it? For over 150 years, scientists have been trying to figure it out. This is their story. On a clear April afternoon in 1891, somewhere near Brussels in Belgium, a British scholar, Thomas Phipson, struggled with Tchaikovsky's violin concerto. Feeling frustrated, he opened his study windows for some fresh air. Relaxing in an armchair, he picked up the weekly paper of the French Academy of Sciences, turning to page 598. In a moment, his problems faded away when Phipson saw a headline on the Earth's own smell. He smiled and got excited. Intrigued by a scientific note mentioning experiments by two French chemists on soil and distillation, Phipson checked his old experiment notebooks from 25 years ago. The same question he was pondering now had fascinated him back then. What caused the unique smell of rain-soaked soil? Marcelin Berthelot and his colleague Gustave André embarked on a mission to isolate the elusive compound responsible for the captivating scent. They boiled soil mixed with water and captured the distillate vapors, finally obtaining a few drops of a yellowish liquid with an intense aroma. Phipson also conducted similar experiments almost three decades ago, but his description of the distillate scent was more general, a strong smell of cedar. Despite their dedication, both French scientists didn't find a definitive answer. Undeterred, Phipson saw the value in his old experiments and wrote to the Scientific American magazine, proposing a hypothesis that the scent of rain might come from hidden flower fragrances trapped in the soil, released when it rains. While it was just a theory, Phipson's letter became a turning point. It led to the recognition of the smell of rain as an interesting scientific question on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. In science, ideas sometimes arrive too early, waiting for the right moment to become real and practical. For over 70 years, the idea of the smell of rain-soaked soil lay dormant, enduring world wars and technological advancements in analytical chemistry. But like a persistent seed, the concept came back to life, this time in the mind of a curious scientist in the Southern Hemisphere. In the busy labs of Melbourne's Department of Mineral Chemistry, Australian chemist Richard Thomas got fascinated by this puzzle. He discussed it passionately with his colleagues in the echoing corridors, not wanting to ignore the idea that intrigued him. Thomas gave the task of finding the elusive scent to researcher Isabella Baer. While others had thought the smell might come from living organisms in the soil, Baer focused only on rocks, taking a new approach. Even after exploring rocks, the answer remained elusive. But during their quest, they came up with a name that captured the essence they sought, Petrichor, 
The word came from two ancient Greek words, Petros, meaning stone, and Ikor, meaning the blood of the gods, symbolizing the sacred connection between earth and sky. In 1964, their groundbreaking experiments were published in the prestigious journal Nature. Finally, people had a name for the captivating scent. It smells like petrichor. Well, not really. People still referred to it as the smell of rain. Smells like rain. It's not gonna rain today. At the same time, across the Pacific Ocean, American chemist Nancy Gerber began her quest to uncover the elusive scent. She wondered if the living creatures in the soil held the answers and explored the microscopic world beneath us where life thrives. The soil isn't just a mix of rocks and decay, it's a thriving ecosystem. It's full of tiny powerhouses, microorganisms like fungi and bacteria. There are more microbes in a gram of soil than stars in our galaxy. Most of these tiny beings are still unknown, hiding their secrets in the Earth. Scientists like Nancy Gerber focus on what these tiny creatures produce, called metabolites. These give us insights into their hidden work. Streptomyces are one group of these tiny residents, an important bunch of bacteria that led to life-saving antibiotics. In the lab where antibiotics were first discovered, Nancy Gerber noticed something common, an earthy smell from all the streptomyces cultures in the fridge. Nancy set out to find the compound behind this smell. With determination and modern tools, she revealed its structure. 12 carbon atoms, 10 hydrogen atoms, and a single oxygen atom. And so, with a name to call it, the mysterious scent finally got its true identity. Geosmin, the fragrant essence that fills the air after rain. Three years later, in 1969, Nancy identified a new compound, 2-methylisoborneo, again isolated from streptomyces. Two main compounds of that after-rain smell were finally pinned down. Smells like rain. But the big question remained. Well, there isn't a cloud in the sky. What was Geosman's Night, job? Howdy. Good night, Miss Lee. Then, 60 years later, a German scientist named Paul Betcher stepped in, looking to solve the mystery practically. With G. Osman as bait, he set up a smart plan. He placed the bait, smelling of G. Osman, in the woods. Then he waited to see what secrets the forest's creatures might reveal. When the sun rose again, Betcher found his bait had caught small jumping arthropods called springtails. They are famous for their big leaps, being able to jump more than 15 centimeters in a flash, like leaping over the Eiffel Tower for their size. This was a big discovery. The creatures that sensed Geosmin ate the Streptomyces, making them an important part of the forest's ecosystem. But that wasn't the end of the Streptomyces journey. Some of them survived the springtail stomachs and ended up somewhere new. These tiny microbes used Geosman scent to find their way through the complex maze of soil, traveling far from where they started. In this timeless partnership, Geosman acted like a conductor. It is the scent that orchestrates one little nature story beneath the ground. But is that all? the air is before a shower. Humans can really smell geosmin well. Our noses can sense it even at tiny amounts, less than five parts in a trillion. To picture that, think about one teaspoon in 200 Olympic swimming pools. 
that's 200,000 times more sensitive than a shark is to blood in water. But we're not sure why we can smell it so well. Other animals that can smell geosmin give us clues. It helps glass eels find their way from the deep ocean to freshwater streams. It might guide Bedouin's camels to water in the desert. African elephants can sniff it too, helping them find water. Maybe this smell helped ancient nomadic tribes find wet soil, especially after droughts. This ability could have stuck with humans through time. The wonder of this science detective lies not only in unraveling the mysteries, but in the power of asking simple questions about the world around us. Our noses, sensitive to soil smell after rain, have revealed secrets about two almost invisible species, a connection that goes back millions of years. Under our feet, there's a lot of life we don't know about. Countless creatures live in the soil, waiting to be found. Imagine if we took out all the non-living stuff from the soil, all rocks and minerals. We'd be in a fluffy cloud of tiny living things. It's like a universe of little stars holding up the ground we walk on. The words of Leonardo da Vinci, spoken over 500 years ago, echo still today. Our knowledge of the celestial bodies far surpasses what we know of the life beneath our own toes.